Welcome back to the channel. I'm Peter Mokri, a Dallas-based DP, photographer, and gaffer. Today, we're talking top-down. Big camera and little camera. Let's go. Today, we're gonna be booming with two different arms. This is an Avenger D600. It's a bit, little bit larger. It's designed to boom things out. And then we're gonna use a regular C-stand arm. So let's start with the regular C-stand arm. A common way people like to attach their cameras to these types of stands is with little pins like this. This is a baby pin to 3 8 Or they may go as simple as this. And I don't recommend doing these because you just don't have so much support. And then something like this, which ends up working out really well. So what this is right here is designed to slip over onto the stand and then you have a 3 8 adapter to it. So what does 3 8 give you? On some cameras, you could directly mount a 3 8 to the bottom of a cage. When rigging top down, I highly recommend a cage for many reasons. One of the big ones is safety. Uh, and also the mounting point at the bottom of the camera is not designed to handle the weight of it torqued like this, um, hanging overhead with possibly, uh, you know, some heavy items hanging from it. It's just not a safe way to do it. And it's just a quarter 20 thread. So if we were to mount this way, we have a few options. We could mount directly to it with the cage, attach it like that, or we could attach um, a quick release plate. So this is designed for like Manfrotto plates to slide into, and you could just attach that right on, and then you have that set up, and then you just slide the camera into place, and it holds it in there. Problem with this is you have no adjustments. It's locked on there. So that makes it really difficult. So what I always recommend is getting something like a head that you may have. So this could be a ball head. This could be a video head. So if we did a ball head, you just attach it on there. Uh, if I could get it threaded on, there we go. And then it has a nut on there to help uh, get it into the right position and make it nice and tight so you could torque it. And what's cool about this type of head, which it's called the geared head, uh, and what I like about it is I'm gonna scoot this out of the way a little bit more. There we go, so we can work on it better. Okay. What I like about this, make sure everything's nice and tight, is it has the ability to be adjusted. So I'm gonna attach the plate that goes to it. Make sure it's facing the right way. Attach it real nice and tight. I'm gonna use my flathead with a big handle. I hate when you have itty bitty little screwdrivers. This guy is nice and big, extra tight. And then it attaches in. So I'm gonna click it in. And this is what's really cool about this setup. So it's in place. I'm looking at the screen and I'm trying to figure out, man, it's not level. With a geared head like this, it's called the geared head, you can make micro adjustments by just twisting the knob. So instead of having to hold it, loosen the ball head, try to adjust it. Now, also, we're struggling with adjusting to make sure it's level. I always recommend these guys. And what they are is just a uh, bubble level that I could attach to the camera. So I have a handle here, so I'm just gonna attach it here. And now I can see if I'm level and make my adjustments. Yep, we're good there. And go a little bit of left to right, make that adjustment. And now we're perfectly level, we're pointing straight down. Even if the stand arm is not level, now we're level at this point. So now we have a really great top-down setup. Now, what's bad about this setup right now is it's not safe. Something could come loose, fall off, and we have issues. So what I like to do is I like to attach a safety. So these little guys here, What they are is they're used a lot of times to do uh, camera straps off to the side uh, and then you have your strap and it goes to the bottom of the camera. But what I do is I'll just attach it wherever I can. So let's do it right here where you guys can see it. So attach it right there, screw it in, and now we have a loop. And then 
what we do is we'll attach here and then we'll click in to make it safe. So now we have a safety cable to protect it. Now, this isn't the best way to set up the safety cable because on this stand uh, arm, if this slides off, this is going with it. So what can I do to alleviate that? So there's a couple uh, of methods. You could always uh, get a big super clamp on there or something to that effect. But I wanna show you guys something that's very inexpensive. And it's one of these. These little clamps, you probably have them in your kit already. I added an eyelet to it, so. And I'm gonna attach it right here. And I'm gonna do it from the bottom. And the reason I'm gonna do it from the bottom is because when it comes crashing down, it's already down at a downward angle and it's not gonna work itself loose. So now I slide this through, slide, this in and then I click it into place. So now we're safe. So we have a safety here. This is tightened up. It's really strong. It's gonna hold up. Look, even that came loose. See, we didn't safety that. We should have taped it in. It's in there real loose. It doesn't go in snug because it's a metal setup on the handle, but that's ready to go. So now if the camera for some reason disconnects, comes falling down, it's gonna be hanging and it's going to be safe. So that's a really good method of doing things. So now we're gonna to go to the next one. I'm gonna disconnect this. If I can get it done. All right, so we'll leave that safety cable there. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna try another method. So, Another method that can be done that I was just kind of thinking like, you know, what do people have? What can they do? And if you turn this uh, the arm around and you have your gobo here, what you can do is attach a cartellini like this and actually attach it to the camera I give myself some room so I can show you guys everything all right and now I have this handle on here and I put the handle facing this way for a reason um, and the reason is is now we're gonna attach the camera like this And we have a top down setup. Look at that. A lot of you guys have a handle. Some of you guys may even have one of these Cardellini clamps. Now you can mount this top down and you have adjustment. It's not as easy to adjust, but you do have some adjustment. So then when we put this ball level on right here, we can see where we need to adjust. And then we go with the same system as we had before. Now with this one, you'll catch on the edge here. So you don't necessarily have to uh, do this clamp here, but let's just go ahead and do the clamp and attach it. It's attached and then I have my safety on this side, clip it in and it's ready to go. So now we have a top down setup like this using a clamp. Um, this is a car or Cardellini style clamp. It's called a uh, Mathalini by Matthews. This piece right here, it's really great because it is a junior pin, a uh, junior on the outside, so it could go into a junior stand, or it's baby. So that's really cool. But also, if you look closely, it has screws that actually give you the ability to uh, tighten down on your setup. So when attaching it to a head like this, when you screw it down, just like on a tripod, you could uh, torque those down and it will prevent it from spinning loose. So it won't rotate on you. So that's a really big bonus on this guy. So I'm gonna attach this here, click it all the way in. And that's an advantage to using a stand like this versus just using the uh, arm from the C-stand. It doesn't have that notch right there, that little cutout. What's really important is then when you put something in and you tighten it down with the knob, it's not sliding out. Even if it comes a little loose, it doesn't want to slide out easily. So that's something to really consider. So now we get the big camera. 
and we go in with the big one. So let's see if we're all set up. We're set up here. Got the big camera. I'm gonna slide it back a little. There we go. Make sure it's nice and tight. And we've got a top down. What's cool about this one is we have the ability to tilt or rotate on this head. So that's how that one is set up. And then what I would do is I'd run a safety cable. So I'd run a stronger one, if all possible. And I look for a place where I could run it through where it's gonna stay. So on this side, we have part of the cage set up. I'm gonna run it through and then loop it through itself and then bring it over and make it safe. Now, if you're really paranoid, you could double safety chain everything, which could make you feel a lot more comfortable. That's there. We're safety chained up. If it goes down, we're good. Now also what I've done is with this head on here, sometimes the heads kind of freak me out and it's like, oh, they, they can be a point of uh, failure too. And if it comes down and they end up separating, what's gonna happen? So you could end up running that as well over to here, clicking in as needed, or you could loop it around itself and have it connected. So these are my top-down setups. A lot of people do different things. They have different methods and different ways of doing things. What's your go-to method for a top-down shot? Do you go big or do you just go with whatever you have, make it quick and easy, quick and dirty, and get it done? Thank you so much guys for watching. I appreciate all the likes, the comments, and all the people that subscribe. I have a lot more content coming out, including vlogs, and maybe more content like this to help you better your game when you're on set. Thank you so much.